to a lot of podcasts in the years, in the past few years, and had just been really, my spiritual formation was um, people speaking, I, I mean, a lot of, like, ministry leaders and um, different churches, I mean, you guys know, you can access so much through podcasts, and God had just put on my heart, um, I've given you this this platform, so just ask people about their stories, because, it, you know, we, it's our testimonies, it says, I think somewhere in Revel- Revelation that he's, the enemy is defeated by the word of the Lamb and the power of our testimony. And there's so much power in just sharing, like, how Jesus has brought us from the dark and into his glorious and powerful light. So it wasn't some, like, monumental concept or creative idea. It was just, I want artists and creatives to come on the podcast and just share their testimonies. Um, part of that for me was I was picturing, I mean, I was remembering my 15 or 16-year-old self that wished that I had someone in the industry who was just doing it, you know, but also sharing the most important part of who they were, that those things can coincide. Yeah, thinking to your dressing room in Mean Girls, um, was there any, well, uh, was there anybody in that arena who shared your faith? Yeah, I'm really glad you asked that because I wasn't really sure going into it. You know, you just don't know that sometimes you'll find there are lots of believers in what you're doing or sometimes you're the only believer. And um, I, the first person I worked with was the dance captain. Her name's Becca Peterson. You guys may know her. But she was the first person I encountered. And because I was spending a lot of time with the dance captain, dance captains, you know, he teaches you the numbers and he walks you through your blocking. She was mostly the person with me in rehearsals. And she just had a light about her. Like, I always say you can see Jesus in people's eyeballs. <laughs> because um, there was just something. And so I just decided to ask her, like, what did I have to lose? I was like, Becca, do you know Jesus? And she was like, yes. <laughs> like, no one usually asks me that. <laughs> and we just connected on that. and. Um, it's amazing, just like in little questions like that, how God begins to move. And um, I soon found out that one of the stage managers, we have all women stage managers and mean girls because they just pride themselves in like hiring these awesome um, women creators. And uh, one of the stage managers I was spending a lot of time with, I found out she was a Christian. So we started having a lot of conversations about that. And then they were like, I think um, this person might be a Christian. And kind of heard that she might. And so I was just kind of the person that was like, Hi, are you a Christian? <laughs> I heard you follow Jesus. Do you know? <laughs> and, uh, Do you think that came from your um, experience in college? Like, I didn't have a community and now I'm in this new place. Where's my yeah. community? Yeah, I think so. That, like, I just got to, in that breaking point, I was just like, He's changed my life. Like, He's the best thing that has happened to me. Why would I not just ask people about Him and talk about Him? Um, yeah, it's just like faith, you know. Um, so yeah, God just really moved through those friendships, and we actually ended up after the show closed. We all were in the same place of like sadness and depression of what has happened. And some of them, I mean, Becca had been in the show since the conception, so that she's like going on year four or five with this production. I've been there four weeks, you know. Like she really lost something that had been a part of her for quite a while and we ended up starting like a zoom bible study that was like a group from mean girls um when we were all quarantined in our places and just encouraging one another do you want to go to the next one um because you've got a bunch of people on this podcast yes go listen and i interviewed alexandra boyland i was going to ask you did this happen before wow. you met? okay so i no i didn't know alexandra okay. before the podcast yes um i met Ashley Bratcher, she was in the movie Unplanned. I don't know if you ever saw that. Um, and we had connected through Instagram. And I asked her, I said, I know you're a Christian. She's a film actress. Would you come on my podcast? And she was like, sure, yeah, I'd love to come share my story. And after we had our 
conversation, she was like, okay, there's this woman I've met recently. Her name's Alexandra Boylan, and she's just full of faith. She makes women-led, faith-based films. She's awesome. You guys should connect. She should come to share her story. So I was like, yes. Uh, and she came on. She told her story. It's really cool to just hear the background of how she got into what she does and how the Lord has moved in her life and um, why she's passionate about what she does. And that was the first time we met. And then she ended up writing Identi Identity Crisis. At the time, she was working on Switched. And Switched had just come came out, which was her fir first teen girl faith-based film. And we did a little watch party for it in the, the online Bible study community that I had going. And then Alexandra last summer um, sent me the script of Identity Crisis just to uh, read over it and to send her notes. So we can just read this. Like I'm trying to get as much feedback as I can, especially from someone who's not that far removed from you know this generation. And so I read the script and I loved it. And I had no idea. She told me now that she really had me in mind when she was writing the character of Harper, that I was a lot of inspiration of the character. But I didn't know when I read the script of I would one day play Harper, you know. But she came back around to me in December that um, they wanted me to audition for it. And the casting director reached out to me and I did the audition and then found out not very long ago that I would be coming out here to do the movie. So. It's kind of wild. Awesome. Um, do you want to walk us through this too? Uh, yes. This is a good segue to Rice Collective. So, to pick up where I left off with Mean Girls, I I come back home to Arkansas. Most people, I mean, some people stayed in New York. A lot of people fled and just went to their you know prospective homes because we just didn't know how long it was gonna last. It was kind of crazy in New York City. So I went home to my family in Arkansas and how I shared in my testimony, community has just, was just really what changed my life. And I knew that whenever I moved to New York, that getting involved in a church community was just something that was a big priority to me. Um, and I found Church of the City, New York pretty quickly when I moved there, uh, got involved in their like post-grad young professional community, which is just like men and women in their early 20s in New York, because that's a huge demographic in New York City. And then when I moved home, I just made like all these friends and you know had lots of discipleship just around me and I didn't have that anymore. So naturally, as I'm just like, you know, talking to God about what do you want me to do with this time? He just put on my heart to start a Bible study on Zoom. And I put a Zoom link out on my Instagram and said, if there are any girls that want to get on Zoom on Saturday, we're going to do this Bible study called The Good Gospel. I had found it through this platform called Right Now Media. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of Right Now Media, but they have awesome video Bible studies. They give you the questions and the resources to lead a Bible study. Basically, all you have to do is like, turn on the video and then facilitate the questions and like let the Holy Spirit move, like have your Bible open. You know, it's just, it's pretty simple. And I had 150 girls show up on the Zoom call that Saturday to do this Bible study. And so I'm just like sitting here, staring at all of them on my computer thinking, I cannot disciple 150 girls. Like this is, and also this is a need, like we're all isolated and alone and in our places, one in community. So I, I gathered some of my friends who are a little bit, a lot of the girls were younger, kind of college age. So I gathered some of my friends, we created small groups and we had like a leader with seven to 10 girls and had just church going every single weekend on Zoom. And we would divide out into breakout rooms. I mean, you guys are probably professionals at Zoom now. We'd divide out into breakout rooms, do like discussion. And I was just finding people were really actually building community in this virtual space. It's not ideal, but it's all we had at that time. And God was moving through it and connecting people. So I just continued to lean into that. But this is just a verse that really connects to I think my passion behind that at that time and still is that Hebrews 
So yeah, these two verses have just been a big part of what has become Rise Collective Women. God tells us just don't stop encouraging one another, meeting together, whatever. If you need to creatively come up with a new way to do it, God uses everything. I firmly believe it. He uses Instagram. Yeah, I've seen him do it. He uses podcasts. He uses online discipleship. He uses TikTok. They're all probably all over there. You see Christian TikTokers. There's just people move through all of these different, God moves through all these different platforms. So it's always showing up there and just encouraging. How many times have you, like, you get an email from, like, some email subscription or you see an Instagram reel and it's, like, a scripture and you just feel like it's just speaking to you. You're like, that's exactly what Pinterest needed to show me right now. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, that's the Lord. Like, he's literally trying to speak to us all the time. It's, are we listening? Are we participating? So those are just two verses that really inspire in Bryce Collective. And he's crafting you since you were a little girl. Yeah. In this home, into being comfy in front of people in the pageant series and things like that, and then going to a place and not having community, feeling that hunger for it. And you said over and over, I've heard you say, I leaned into the word. I, I went back to the word. Um, so you're uniquely balanced at this point, after a week of performing in Mean Girls, to put this out on Instagram and have these girls. And who knows where that leads them in their lives as they lead, right? It's wild. Yeah. Like the details of of not not really understanding and I didn't know in those seasons of my life like why I was doing yeah, I did pageants, I lost them. You know, I didn't win them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I was a part of them, but I got I, I didn't end up, you know, like getting the outcome or it didn't always look like what I thought right. it I wanted it to look like, but it formed me. You know, so that I could do the thing that God yeah. had for me. So I don't know. That's encouraging and all. Right, that's super awesome. Um, so the Rise Collective um, it has, does that have a mission? Yes, it, it does. It's it's so funny. It's like it's such a like it's such like a thing now. And at the time, I I want to keep saying this because at the time I didn't know what I was doing. You know, like I didn't think. I'm gonna start a women's ministry. <laughs> it just organically happened, you know? I just was asking, God, how can I participate in what you're doing? And he's like, here, let's do this thing. And it's funny, I first, bad branding, Mark, that, that's not necessarily my um, strength, but it was first called College Girls for Christ. That was our first name of it, because a lot of the girls were college girls. And then I ran up into, um, there were women that weren't necessarily in college that wanted to be a part of it, so they were kind of, out of college or younger, so I was like, huh, not College Girls for Christ, it's Laurelie's Bible Study Community. <laughs> Everybody's like, okay, <laughs> doesn't really catch on. Uh, but that verse, a rise shine, rise shine through light has come, just kept coming into my mind, and so I was like, okay, the Rise Collective, it's a group of people rising, um, and that's the mission statement. Yeah, it's women united in Christ, rooted in God's word, and rising up. For the glory of God and we do this by cultivating community in New York City so we have a group that meets every week for Bible study we do different gatherings and um, it's in person now. it's in person yeah in New York and then we still have our online community where we're always creating like discipleship resources um, the girls like share things every day share scripture encourage one another there are girls all over the world, which is the crazy part about online discipleship. There were girls that would get on our online Bible studies during quarantine. That there's a girl in Uganda. There was a girl in the UK. That there were there was one girl that would like wake up at 1 a.m. so that she could be a part of it on our time schedule, which is just you know you just don't expect things like that to happen when you just take a step and then God's like. I'm really it. creative. <laughs> I'm the king of the universe. <laughs> so that's the yeah. mission statement. Um, yeah, so this is just some like facts about what we did this past year, but we had we did over ten Bible studies, weekly Bible studies in twenty twenty. Uh, it reached that many women, twelve hundred women from over ten different countries. Wow. Wrote a discipleship companion and really fallen in love with writing and creating in that way. 
Yeah, leaders. This is my favorite one because it says that you decided um, it wasn't about you, it was about the discipleship of these. Yeah. Women, and that you're brave enough um, to let others. Yeah. Them, right? Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, this is Rise Collective Women Online and I was excited to share with you guys this because if it's something you're interested in, sorry boys. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's just online community that we have. There's an Instagram, you want to follow the Instagram. But basically, everything we're creating and doing Bible study wise in New York, it's available through Right Now Media to participate in, um, to lead your own group, to just, it's like an Instagram feed. It's on this platform called Mighty Networks. Basically, we just outgrew GroupMe and text messages and Mighty Networks is a, a place that we all, it's like a online home and you can meet other girls online and uh, it's been so cool to see the real life friendships that have come from the online connection. There's a group of them that have now become like roommates in Florida and have like, you know, developed like in-person relationships, which you don't necessarily, you know, think about when you think about an online platform. So. Yeah, there's a, you get a free Right Now Media membership when you join it. It's um, it's pretty cool. All of our like Zoom events and stuff, you find in it. I just love this quote, so, so I put it in here. Um, I'll read it, but yeah. But God has put this word into the mouth of men in order that it may be communicated to other men. When one person is struck by the word, he speaks it to others. God has willed that we should seek and find his living word in the witness of a brother in the mouth of man. Therefore, the Christian needs another Christian who speaks God's word to him. He needs him again and again when he becomes uncertain and discouraged. For by himself, he cannot help himself without belying the truth. He needs his brother man as a bearer and proclaimer of the divine word of salvation. He needs his brother solely with him in Jesus Christ. Isn't that real? Just that we really need each other, and we need each other to speak truth into each other constantly. God is just using us in community. I just think that's he puts it in words. I want to share with you guys this because I don't know how many of you are moving to New York or dream of moving to New York or want to pursue a career that takes you up there, but something that is kind of forward vision with Rise Collective is um, we're going to have a house in New York that is a space for women to live that will be a discipleship program. So it's for women that have just graduated from college in that transition year from college to career to be able to be formed in discipleship. And so it'll be 12 women living together. And there's information on risecollectivewomen.com that you can, and on my Instagram if you go to the, um, like that, I have a link tree where you can sign up for my email list and you can find more information about the house. But we're hoping in the next year that'll be available. So there will be like an application process, but in case that is something you would want to be interested in or know someone who would want to be interested in it, I just wanted to share that with you. So yeah, those are just some stats about like just how hard it is um, to, to find community and, and grow in discipleship. But I think this might be a solution, so. That's incredible, you guys. I love that. That's fantastic.